What up, y'all? It's DJ NV. And I am Gia Casey. And this is another edition of the Casey Crew. Welcome. Now, what are we calling this podcast? Um, Twas the Night before n- what was n- it no what's it called well it's the podcast before christmas so oh. twas the podcast before, before christmas. christmas Twas the podcast <laughs> yes. before christmas well happy holidays to everybody out yes, there. yes happy holidays now um i hopefully uh you know each and every year again i do this tradition it's called 12 days of christmas mm-hmm. and um i wanted to show my wife i appreciated her and i wanted to do something special and fun and kind of brings the kid out of gear a little bit. And you. And me too. And yes. me too. So we came up with this thing called 12 Days of Christmas. Well, you came up with this right. thing called 12 Days of Christmas. Right. And for 12 days, you know, up until Christmas, I get gear something that she can open the day of. So it could be anything. And I encourage you guys. I mean, we're a little late because we didn't do it last week. But I encourage <laughs> you guys to, to do something like that. Even if it's only five days to Christmas, six days to Christmas, it doesn't have to be expensive. It's not about the the price of the gift it's not about how much you spend it's not about that it's just the little things that just show that person mm-hmm. that you love them and that you care and that you appreciate them and that you pay attention to them right that that's you pay what it is it's the them. thoughtfulness absolutely that goes into it and you know and if you don't want to delve into that tradition it's really nice to come up with traditions of your own right and you es- know and especially nowadays because there's so much going on in the world mm-hmm. there's so much going on and you know a lot of times we're running left running right and we forget to just tell the people in our lives and our family that we love them so doing things like that definitely reminds them and 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 keeps that that blood flowing you know it's kind of like um right now just like you said in this day and times people kind of ignore the nucleus correct it's like you kind of lose sight of family and how important home is and loving on the people around you and showing them how much they mean to you. Correct. You know, so it's really nice to come up with different ideas. You know, you can sit down with your partner and, you know, figure out, figure out a tradition and it doesn't necessarily have to be something that the two of you share or gifts between the two of you. It can be something that you do for your kids. Correct. Because just having tradition is such a beautiful thing. You know, I grew up and there were certain traditions that my family did and it just made growing up a little bit more special and more memorable. And I know you and your family had traditions Mm -hmm. and how did that make you feel? I mean, I I, I loved it. We didn't really do holiday traditions as much. We all came to somebody's house like each year. We went to a different... The Christmas paper fight wasn't a tradition? Well, yeah, the Christmas paper fight. We would, you know, after everybody opened up their gifts, we would crumple up all the the wrappings and we would throw it at each other. <laughs> yeah, it was always yes. a lot of fun. It would be older people, younger. It was, We've we just done that in your house every Christmas since I was 15. Because how many people would be in your house? About maybe 25? About 25 Christmas yeah. would be about 25 people. Mm-hmm. And just like he said, you know, everybody would be finished opening up all their gifts and the family room or the living room would be a hot mess and uh-huh. just a ribbon and everything, glitter everywhere. And then as it started to simmer down, people started gathering their paper and balling it up and beaming it at one another, Absolutely. aiming for the face. I mean, it was a little wicked, yeah. you know, in, in a way, but it got a little out of hand. But that's something I remember doing every single year for Christmas. And then when we took over Christmas, you know, when we got big, when we when we we grew up and, you know, we bought our own house. We started hosting Christmas and, you know, then it was like the older aunts and uncles and the grandparents and everything. At that time, they would come to our house and we'd engage in the same traditions. So the point is, I encourage you guys to come up with your own traditions. Absolutely. Give your kids memories. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the main thing. Just try to enjoy the holiday season. And I think for us, not to say that we haven't. But in this last year, we've been doing a lot more of it. And I think that's because maybe it's the president change. Maybe, I mean, we've been seeing more and more people need help. But, you know, if you can try to help somebody as well, this is the holiday season. I know somebody might be like, well, I ain't got it. Well, if you ain't got it, just imagine the person next to you really ain't got it. Right. And we've been doing a a lot of that. And and I'm so that's been making me very, very happy. Like, we know, we did defeating homeless in in Newark Mm -hmm. and. We did uh, 
Toys for Tots. We did Toys for Tots. And then mm-hmm. shout out to Civilized Nation is a sneaker store I get my sneakers from. We always do a pizza party for a group home where mm-hmm. kids that, you know, uh, pretty much don't have a mom or dad and they're raised by, I want to say, the city of the state. And we have a big pizza party. We buy all the kids sneakers. We give them starter jackets. And, you know, we play music. We do dance. And we just talk to them about doing so many things. And we, we've been doing a lot of that. And, and it's just a lot fun to just help people out, you know? Right. We also, every season, quote unquote, adopt a few orphans and make their Christmas every Correct. year. So that's something that if you can do that, I mean, you get to meet the person that you are helping. Correct. You know, that there's no other feeling. There's no other feeling. They create a Christmas list uh-huh. and... You know, and and just like I think we talked about this maybe last year, it's the simplest of things. Right. And you realize the little things that can really be life changing for someone, like t shirts or T shirts. Socks Remember or one year slippers one or just year the kid a book wanted bag. What's them socks? The the expensive Nike socks. I can't remember what it's called, but Logan likes them. Logan too. likes the socks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he wanted a pair of those socks. Just a pair of socks. A pair of socks. So yeah. we try we try to do that a lot and you know, it, it 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 it's really it just feels good to help people out and just to see their smile and to see their face and to mm-hmm. see all the things. You know, um uh you know, last night this was probably one of the funniest things I've ever seen. You know, a lot of times you know, I wouldn't even say a lot of times, but last year, Christmas, you know, a lot of the kids stuff we actually bought online, we bought and they sent, delivered it to the house. Right. Mm-hmm. And it was a couple of things I had to pick up. So I went to Toys R Us and picked it up. And a couple of years, that, that's really what happened. So last night, Gia and I, uh, hold on, the nanny's calling you. You better pick up this phone. As you can see, we are live and we are in our bedroom. See what the nanny wants. Hello. As we wait. Hi, Irma. Irma's the nanny. As we waiting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, we're well, taping the podcast right now. So. Mm-hmm. This is how you know it's a <laughs> um, live can you show. ask Madison for it, and then I'll take care of it after. Yes, as you can see, she's calling. I guess she needs okay, yeah, something. Okay, yeah, we do it in the bedroom now. Yeah, because yeah, she can't walk oh. in here because we're <laughs> okay, butt ass naked. <laughs> Okay. She's like, okay, 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 <laughs> bye. Because <laughs> you heard her knocking on the door, yeah, right? Yeah, I heard her knocking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, who's gonna come barging through? That she didn't realize that we were actually working in here. Okay, anyway. So, um, last night, you know, Gia and I went to Toys R Us, and for all the parents out there, you know, usually Toys R Us has holiday schedule where they close at two, three in the morning. Right. So Gia and I go to Toys R Us at midnight. Right. Mm-hmm. And. It feels like the store is ours. There's nobody in the store. Maybe two parents, maybe two other parents. Well, last night when we went Christmas shopping, there was only two other people, in, aside in, from the employees, two other shoppers in, in the entire, entire store. Toys R Us. But, you know, I don't know if it's like that at all of the Toys R Us's because we've gone shopping at midnight before and it's been packed. So I don't know what it is about this year or maybe it's the specific location of this Toys R Us is kind of in the cut. It might have been that because right. that store was empty. D. And it, and and it's it, even if you don't so we have, have kids, five star service. Even if you don't have kids, it's a perfect date night. And I know it sounds what? corny. I'm explaining. It's, that wasn't it, romantic. I'm gonna tell what you. What are we talking about? I'm gonna tell you. It's 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 a great date night. We because, fought. We fought <laughs> in Toys R Us. But it was a fun fight, you know. Because last night we go to Toys R Us and you get to see a lot of the toys that you had when you were kids, oh. and it brings out that feeling. So last yeah. night, Gia is running around. <laughs> Playing all these toys. She's reliving her Barbie days. And she's telling me how I had the Barbie with the string elevator. Yes. And, and I had this and I had that. Mm-hmm. And then I'm on there riding. My Kawasaki drums. Yeah, see, so your Kawasaki yes. drums. I'm in there riding the bikes through Toys R Us. Yes. We just had a great time at Toys R Us. Even though we got a, a lot of shopping done and we got, you know, all the kids taken care of. But. We just had a lot of time. I mean, playing with the wrestling ropes and the basketballs and mm-hmm. and the Minnie Mouse cars and the drum machines and Paw Patrol. We just had a great time in, yeah. in Toys R Us. No, but there was a lot of nostalgia going on in Toys R Us yesterday. Like that Barbie camper mm-hmm. looked just like the Barbie camper that I had when I was nine years old. Mm. And that Barbie dream house, 
But like uh-huh. you said, mine had the string elevator. I will never forget that Barbie Dream House. It made me feel a way. Right. So, you, you know, so Gia made us buy one for London. Yes. London got a Barbie Dream House. I'm hoping I didn't really pay attention to the specifics because we were doing so much shopping, but I'm hoping it has something special that she's going to remember when she's a grown woman. Well, I hope daddy can put it together because that shit has a lot of parts. Rashawn, I don't even know what we're going to do. Like that I don't a even lot of know. Parts, and I'm not. And There's I'm not good with so the stickers either. many things. No, you're horrible at the stickers. Uh, I hate the you stickers. So stickers are crooked and all that other stuff. Yes, but I don't. I really don't know what we're going to do mm-hmm. if we don't start building things tomorrow. There's a, a thousand things that need to be built. You you have a lot of putting together to do. Well, you need to incorporate some friends. I know. Well, this is vacation time. You need to time, make some so bribes to, you know, to bring your friends away from their well, family the to our is, house. I got because Madison. Madison helps me a lot with that stuff. So, yeah, um, but she has a lot going on this week. I think you need to call some friends, and you guys need to get to building. I'm gonna try, but there's a lot. Like you got a lot of stuff. You need that... to become one with the Allen key and start putting some stuff together. Oh boy. Well, but but back to what I was saying. Was okay. like, you know, the, but that's a perfect way. Cheap you know, date. Cheap date. I Love mean, you it. still got to go get the get the person something to eat. But Pizza. then after that, you go to Toys R Us and just look around, you know? Just experience that thing. Even if you don't have a nephew or a niece or somebody to get shopping to, just be like, "Hey, I want to go get something for my neighbor." It's all right. Go in there and just look at the stuff. It'll be so much fun. Trust me. Mm-hmm. Trust me, trust me, trust me. Yes, no, I enjoyed myself. You know what I want to talk about in this podcast? Oh, there's a lot, a lot of things I want to go through. Um, let's talk. So you're not rushing tonight? No, there's no rush tonight. I'm off. I ain't got vacation. I ain't got to go to sleep. I mean, we got to go. So you're not tired? No, I'm not tired. Oh, okay. I, I got to do, do a couple of things. We got to do a couple of things after, but I'm yeah, good. Yeah, we really have a lot to do today. Um, f- I want to talk about Christmas etiquette. Okay. All right. So a lot of people ask, you know, if I'm going to a friend's house, do I need to bring something? Mm. So. Okay. I say this. I say absolutely positively, no matter what, if you're going to somebody's house, you should bring something, no matter what it is, no matter if it's a bottle of liquor, mm-hmm. uh, whether it's a bottle of champagne, bottle of wine, um, or, you know, or vodka, or, vodka, or tequila, or tequila yes. or anything like that. A bottle or of alcohol always works. If you're going to a, a older woman's house, maybe. Mm-hmm. When I say older woman, like if you're going to your girlfriend's mother's house or your girlfriend's grandmother's house, okay. you always bring the mom something. And that's something easy. It doesn't have to be expensive. You could get a candle. Women like candle, mm-hmm. correct? Uh, you know, you can go to Home Goods, right? Home, Home Goods, Goods has a lot of stupid shit for the house. one of my favorite stores. I get in there and I don't know how to act. Oh, believe me, I know. I get in there and I do not know how to act. I go in there thinking that I might need one or two things Home and goods. I come out with 26 things. Oh, let me just say something. How that happens, I don't know. Home Goods and has a lot of shit that you, people don't need. Oh my gosh, and I don't know how they sell their merchandise so inexpensively. Inexpensively, I'm like, I can get all this for 12.99. I need 3 of them. That is how Home Goods feels to me. I hope you guys have a home goods in your town. And if you don't, go to the next town over. I'm sure they have one. Home goods is awesome. Like, Gia makes up things for home goods. We're in home goods yesterday. Mm-hmm. And Gia sees a telephone booth. And I see her staring at wait, the wait, telephone Wait, 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 wait. It's not just a telephone booth. Go ahead. It's a red telephone booth that goes in ha- hand in hand with the telephone booths in London. Get it? <laughs> Don't look at me like Our daughter's that. room is pink. It has nothing to do with red. I was thinking that if we change the decor in London's room, we can design it around a London theme. So like I said, I'm looking at Home Goods and I'm watching her stare at this telephone and booth. And I'm thinking to myself, telephone booth was we don't beautiful. need a telephone booth. We don't need a if telephone booth. If she has a London theme bedroom, we would need a red telephone That's booth. That's what I'm talking about. Home Goods just has a lot of bullshit that people just don't need. I was thinking we could buy it and just put it in our storage room and in the case that we want to change the decor of her room, maybe in about another three or four years, It'll be there waiting for I us. I went to Home Goods one time, and they if had- you guys have been to Home Goods, you have seen this red telephone booth. It comes in seasonally around the holiday season. It pops up, and I've always looked at it and admired it. I went and I opened it up and looked at it. 
It's, it wasn't it beautiful. Lie and say it wasn't it beautiful. Was beautiful. I went to Home Goods one time and it was a circus tricycle in the, in the Home Goods, <laughs> like a circus. <laughs> they have the most tall random things. Yes. Tricycle. And yes. I seen it and I was like, if Gia was here, Gia would be like, you know what? We should take this because you know <laughs> we might turn one of the kids' rooms into a, a circus event, and you know we might just leave this like right. And that like, tricycle would have been forty nine ninety nine and well worth it. Am goodness. I lying? No. Am I lying? No, no damn tricycle. Oh my God. Like they had all types of, you know what they had yesterday? What? You guys, you know those, and I don't even know if they're English, but in my mind it's English. You know those beautiful English baby carriages? Like it's not a stroller. Oh my goodness. But it's, yes. You, yes. Oh, it's a baby carriage, like a bed and it just, it looks very English. Yeah. Oh my, they had one. I'm like, where are you guys getting your stuff from? They have the most random things. I mean, it was expensive. It was like $1,900. But damn it to hell, I wanted it. You and if like, you weren't there, you might have came home to a new baby carriage. And they would have right back. I'm like, we're, we're, we're trying, right? It was like, <laughs> you, you was want like, another baby, right? It was like, 50 50, it's going to be a girl. Oh, because it was pink. Could you imagine Brooklyn laying in there? I'm like, Brooklyn's one. She's not laying in there. <laughs> Gig goes, well, when she sleep, she doesn't sleep, all right? No, we're not getting that damn stroller. But back to what we're talking about. Uh -huh. We're talking about etiquette. So what do you think when people go to somebody's house, what should they bring? And should they bring something? Well, I don't even really think it's about what should they bring. Because I think we talked about that last year mm -hmm. on the podcast. But I think the bigger question is whether you should bring something or not. But if we're going to just cover lightly what you should bring, a candle is nice. Um, like you said, liquor is nice. Uh -huh. um, a treat is always nice, like a box of cupcakes Correct. or a cake, like some type of dessert. I don't believe in ever showing up at someone's house empty handed. I don't. Yeah, I, I agree with you. No matter where you're going. Yes. However, mm -hmm. for me, okay. in my house, I almost prefer if our guests don't bring anything. I agree with you. I prefer if you come empty handed to my house, but that's my own personal preference. That's not the standard. Unless, unless whatever it is, you're going to use that night. So for instance, if you are a wine drinker. Okay. And you say, okay, I'm going to bring a nice bottle of wine wait, wait, wait. for us to drink. Hold that on, night. hold on. If who's a wine drinker? If the person is the guest or the homeowner? The guest. If the guest is a wine drinker, you want them to bring their own wine? No, 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 no. If that's the case, what kind of, what the hell kind of hosts are we? I, for instance. Oh, really? Like, you like wine? Well, you better bring some wine. I, like a, my good friend. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I, like my good friend Danny, right? Okay. Danny is a Patron drinker. He's a tequila drinker. Right. right? So if we're hosting something, we should make sure. That there is a bottle of Patron for Danny. But he's going to bring bottle of Patron too. Anyway, he just does that all the time. I mean, he may, but we're talking about what a person should do. If you're, if I'm hosting something and I know that someone only drinks Diet Coke. Then I'm going to bring him Diet Coke. Then I'm going to make sure that there's Diet Coke at my home. Okay. If someone is coming over and I know they only drink sparkling water, I'm going to make sure that I have sparkling water. Okay. That's what you do as a host. You please your guests. Okay. Okay. Oh, really? You only, you only like Cabernet Sauvignon? <laughs> that's how you pronounce it, right? I'm not a wine drinker. I don't know what you just said. But I, I think that's how you I pronounce you it. With me. I don't know what you said. <laughs> well, you better bring your own. Well, I said, all no, right, if you right. like Cabernet Sauvignon, then I'm going to make sure <laughs> okay. there's a bottle of that here for you. Okay. Okay. So I, that makes sense. Right. Like for Christmas this year, you want jerk chicken. Correct. I'm like, I love jerk chicken, but Madison doesn't like spicy food. Logan doesn't love spicy food. There's a good chance that some of our guests aren't in love with spicy food. So you have to know that if we're going to have jerk chicken, you have to have another chicken alternative. I got baked chicken too. Or barbecue right. chicken is up to you. Oh, you did, you did order yeah, yeah. baked chicken? Okay. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you have to make sure that. How are your kids Jamaican and don't like jerk chicken? Like, I've never understood that. Listen, don't I, don't, like I, don't, I don't get I it don't either. Get it. I Because I ate spicy foods all my life. I don't remember ever eating anything like, ooh, that's too spicy for me. I eat spicy food that comes on my London ass. London will, yes. <laughs> yes, you tell me about it all the time. But even London, like, it, something could just have a little bit of a tang to it and she's like oh this is spicy sparkling water she will not mess with sparkling water she would be like this is spicy soda dad this is spicy, spicy soda, water this yeah. is spicy water spicy this is water. spicy water dad you want spicy <laughs> water I'm like it's just bubbles but she won't mess with it right 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 you know I, and I also wanted to say you know for the holidays for the holidays try not to argue you know and the reason you I think say people that, try to argue for the holidays no but yeah I know it's a higher argument rate 
if there was a rate. I mean, it would be a higher argument rate. Because oh, I people understand. Are, people are usually stressed saying. during the holidays. And I really think holidays can cause a massive breakup and massive divorce because people are stressed out. They're emotional. They're trying to make sure and trying to please everybody, whether it's their mama, daddy, their kids. And it's a very stressful time. Mm-hmm. And I know for myself before, during the holidays would be a very difficult time for me mm-hmm. because you're trying to please everybody. You're not just right. your wife, your kids, your family. And it's always a lot on you. And a lot of times you take that mm-hmm. out on the closest people to you. So, you know, I've always learned that for the holidays, keep it easy. Keep it light. Even if you are stressful, just breathe and and try to push arguments back and push things back till later on where you have more of a clear mind. <laughs> okay. Why are you saying okay? Um, no, I was just thinking. You said past Christmases, so I'm. Tr- I was sitting here trying to think of did I ever see stress on you? Oh, I've been stressed the fuck out, mad time. Christmas, <laughs> no, because you, you know, like you know, this is the first time in December that I actually took a month off of DJing. Because usually I DJ no matter what, right? But I took off because I said I really want to experience and really have fun. Like I want to be with the kids twenty four seven and mm-hmm. really enjoy it. But you know, usually Christmas Eve I got a party. Right. So after the party, I'm coming here trying to put shit together and rap and help you yeah, rap we, shit. We've never slept on Christmas. No, Eve. and it's always a, there I, hasn't been a single Christmas Eve since we've had kids that we have slept. Right. And then we wake up the next day and we got Christmas well, at the house. We can't wake up if well, we well, haven't you know slept. what I mean. But you got the, the next morning the kids get up and then you got to. I'm looking a hot prepared. mess. You're looking a hot like, mess. And it's it's like, do we even have time to brush our teeth because we're sitting there watching, you know, watching the time. Right. Like, okay, the kids are about to be up. It's like six o'clock. They're about to be up, and I still have this to together and that's put together and i want to make it look all pretty and beautiful and perfect for them yeah that is a lot of stress a lot of stress and and especially for you and then somebody comes that you don't expect and then you don't have a gift so then you got to try to see what- oh 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 but we always have backup gifts. Yeah, you got backup you gifts. guys you must have backup gifts and the perfect place to get a backup gift is it's home goods. It's home goods. This is not a home goods sponsor. <laughs> no, we're not sponsored by home goods. But I really just love that store. It's a little treasure, you know. But yeah, you can go in there and get something for twelve ninety nine, sixteen ninety nine, and have like a little backup gift. So I always have about four or five backup gifts mm-hmm. that you know I can give to a male or a female or something like that. Right. But also another reason why I don't really want people to bring gifts to my house is mm-hmm. because. If you have more than two children, it's a lot. It's a lot. You know, people come to your house and they feel obligated to bring gifts for all of your children. And that can be a big stressor. Yeah, we got a lot that of rugrats be a, running around. Yeah, that could be a big problem. So when you come to my house, I t- do not bring anything. Just bring yourself Correct. and a smile because I don't want anybody visiting my house feeling stressed or having to go out and spend money Correct. or anything like that for my or my family's sake. So Absolutely. that's kind of a rule here. Don't bring anything. Come empty handed. You could bring a dessert or a bottle of liquor. But aside from that. No, I don't like you better check those gifts at the door. Right. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So now where do you want to go from here? I don't know. Where do you want to go from here? I want to read this letter. A letter? Yeah. No, 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 all right. But that's personal. I don't care. Here we go. Okay. If you write me a letter. Can we have a sidebar really quick? No sidebar. Because I don't necessarily agree that you should read that letter. It's all good. Okay. Now, here it goes. I Hold got on. This... I don't know how I feel about this. No, no I'm serious. I really don't know how I feel no, about we'll this. You can't right. just debo me right now. No, no, no. no, no. It's okay. It's wait, okay. wait. Let's just talk right quick. No, hold no. on. Just hold on. Just hold on. Just hold on. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. It'll be good. Here you go. Rashawn, no. No, 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 no. 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 I'm not no. going to say names or nothing like that, so it's okay. Only him, me, and you will know. Here we go. E, what's good, bro? Now, I got this letter in the mail. Now, there's a reason why I'm reading this letter to you guys, because Gia said something to re- that was real to me, and and I thought she was right when she said it. All right? Somebody might take it. Some people might not be like it, but I don't care. This is, you know, we talk about everything up here, even when it comes to ourselves and shit that we don't want to talk about with our relationship. So, 
Here we go. E, what's good, bro? I hope this letter, re- I hope this letter reaches you in the best of health and highest of spirits. Happy holidays to you, Gia, and all the kids, and congrats on the new additions as well. Before I got locked up, you only had Logan, Madison, and London. Your family is getting big as hell. God bless. I'll keep this short because I know how busy you are between the radio, the clubs, being a dad, and probably 20 other things at one time. Um, I'll fast forward a little bit. Uh, I got into a little trouble, needed some money and I robbed a bar. I got a five year sentence for it. I come home in 2019. Any money that I left behind has been used up. Long story short, my baby mom is going through it and she needs some help. Between being locked up since 2014, I fear my kids won't have a Christmas. One thing I know and admire about you is how good of a father you are and that your kids come first. He has two daughters and wants help, right? So I was talking to Gia about this earlier and um Okay, that's all you're gonna read. That's all I'm gonna read. Oh, okay. I'm not gonna I mean I don't I don't need to read the other personal information. Uh but I was talking to Gia about this earlier and Gia was like, you know, babe, you know, we've been doing a lot to help people and I know how you are about kids. But you said, I got a question for you because I kind of feel a way. And I said, well, you know, what do you feel? And you said, um, I feel funny a little bit about it and, and explain why you had a little funny feeling about it. Well, <clears throat> when you read the letter, I could tell by the look in your face that you wanted to get in the car and run to Toys R Us mm-hmm. and make his family's Christmas. Correct. Well, at least a Christmas for the children. And he has two daughters. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and at first, as I was listening to the beginning, I was thinking, okay, I can see where this is going. And yeah, that may be, that might be a good idea. But this is someone that you knew. I don't remember this person. Mm-hmm. At all. And I mean, we weren't super close. We weren't best friends. We spoke periodically <laughs> and, you know, we were cordial. Right. Um, and at first I thought it might have been a good idea. But when it got to the part about he got locked up for robbing a bar uh-huh. for robbing a bar. Correct. Meaning he's been incarcerated for approximately three years. Right. And now his family is home mm-hmm. without his support, without him being able to work and provide for them. So now his children are suffering. Correct. So clearly you feel bad for the children. Correct. Because children are innocent and they have nothing to do with the actions or the, the decisions of their parents. Mm-hmm. But how I really feel is... That was that man's decision. Correct. We're grown. Mm-hmm. We we have choices. And you have to know that when you commit a crime, especially one that's violent or potentially violent, because I don't think that he walked into the bar and said to the bar manager, hey, I think it'd be a good idea if you gave me all of your money. Right. There had to be some type of physical threat involved. He had to have a gun. I haven't seen any, anybody rob a bank, rob a bar with a knife or anything. And I don't, I've never seen anybody ask for money during a robbery. So I'm sure he had to have a gun mm-hmm. or something. So you put a gun to someone's head or you put a gun in someone's face and you demand something that you didn't earn yourself. And then you attempt to leave with that. Mm-hmm. You go in knowing that that's your plan. You have to also go in knowing that in the case that you get caught, you will be incarcerated. Correct. And you have to know how that will affect your family, your friends, and everyone around you that cares about you. Correct. He did it. That's what happened. And now, because your children and your wife or girlfriend. Uh, Girlfriend, I believe. And your girlfriend are suffering. baby mother. You want help. From someone else. Correct. Now, even in that situation, it's not that I have a problem helping someone in need, especially if I can, but especially. 
especially during the holiday season where there are so many children in need and so many children who aren't going to have a wonderful Christmas. And they're the children of righteous parents, parents that are trying to do good, parents that are trying to provide for their kids in an honest way. But I'm going to turn around and, you know, dig into my pocket or use my resources to help you. No, I'm not doing it. I feel sorry for your girlfriend. I feel feel sorry for your children. But if I'm going to help somebody, it's going to be someone that's more deserving than you. And if you means your family, then that's just what it means. I'd rather help a God-fearing person that does right and is righteous and has good intentions. I'm sorry. You know, and, and I thought about it and I thought about it when I was, when I was working out and I was talking to the trainer and I was telling him, you know, that after talking to you, I, I felt that you were right. You know, I speak to, to people all the time, you know, women who are working three jobs and maybe exactly. have two or three kids and, exactly. and they're trying to buy their kids some Jordans or some sneakers for Christmas and they can't. And, you know, they're working, they're busting their ass to pay for mortgage and busting their ass to pay their car note and busting their ass to pay the lights. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and they're working, trying to do it the right way. Exactly. And, you know, I, I speak to dads sometimes who are who just lost their job and and doing odd jobs to try to, to to maintain their household and to maintain. And then reading that story, I was like, wow, I was like, you know, you're absolutely positively right now. I'm I'm going to help him. I'm going to help him. And, I, and, and I'm going to help him not because of, of our conversation is because. I really feel like God told me to help him because this is something that's been on my mind or, or, you know, all day. Um, but wait, 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 tell me more about that feeling. Not, um, not to sound braggadocious, but you know, people ask a lot, you know, that people have their hand out sometimes and we help a lot of people and, and help a lot of situations, <clears throat> but never does something fall heavy on me where I think about it all the time. Okay. And since I read that letter, I've been thinking about it. Okay. All mm-hmm. day long, mm-hmm. you know, and people ask me that for stuff. That could be God speaking. So to I was you. like, you yes. know, I'm going to I'm going to help, you know, and 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 hopefully me helping clear, fixes him and says, you know, I don't want to do that stupidness no more cuz I, you know, cuz it had to take a lot of pride to write that letter mm-hmm. from jail. So I'm going to help, but I agreed with you. And I was like, you know, and I agree with you. If you have that heavy feeling on your heart, then I absolutely think that we should help. Yeah. And um, after this, I'm, we're going to go to Toys R Us and I'm not going to buy gifts. Uh, I thought about it. I'm going to go get a because uh, I don't know what his daughters are into. We go get Toys R Us gift cards and she can so she can go she can in. go out there and get it. And it could be from her. You know, I don't want it. You know, I, I don't need right. that, that credit. Like, right. Let it be from her. Let it be from Santa. Let it be from the dad. <laughs> whatever it may be that her address is there. I'm going to drop it in the mailbox and just text her and say, hey, there's a, a gift. He left her number. He left a number mm-hmm. and address is a gift in the mailbox. Merry Christmas. But, you know, you were absolutely right. And I was like, you know, we really need to think about what we do because everything is yes. a consequence. You know, yeah. we really need to think, you know, if people I don't do this, think, people don't think ahead. It, it doesn't just it's affect crazy to me. me. It affects my children. It mm-hmm. affects my baby mother, my wife, my girlfriend. It affects my mother and father, you know, and, and the reason I wanted to tell that story is because at first I was like, yeah, I'm going to help dude. And then I thought I about can see it in your face. I, and then I thought about it. And I was like, why should I help him? You know, he put himself in this, in that situation by robbing something. And this is for somebody who's been, shot at for somebody trying to carjack me trying to rob me right from a situation where somebody you know robbed me at gunpoint and i chased him and caught him like from that situation from somebody who didn't want to work to get their own right because i'm out here working to get my own you know right. i'm out here every day 24 7 i'm not sleeping i'm sleeping an hour i'm sleeping with one eye open i'm helping my kids with homework i'm trying to do as much as possible and for somebody to just say okay i got a gun a knife i'm just gonna take it i'm gonna try to get it the easy way mm-hmm. i don't respect that at all I, do I don't I. respect a robber or burglar i that's that's something that i don't respect because there's a lot of people out there that work hard and bust their ass you know and and they go out you know to work and then somebody comes in their house and steals their shit like that bothers the shit out of me because people work hard for their right. stuff 
you know right. and it's not like you know oh, well uh they just got it you know got it from their daddy their daddy this no motherfuckers is out there working right they're busting their ass taking trains taking buses working eight hours sleeping two hours getting back up for you to just say okay i got a gun and i think it's easy for me to just jump in somebody's house fuck that right fuck that. because they want it because they want it because they want it yeah i don't agree with that right so that person saying hey what was me now, you know, I'm I'm not around to help my kids. Can you help them for me? Correct. It really does make me feel yeah. a certain way. But again, that has nothing to do with the children. That has nothing to do with the children. And that's and that's what I'm thinking about. I ain't thinking about him. I'm not thinking about his baby mother. I'm we we you know we're gonna take care of, of the children and hopefully they have a good Christmas and hopefully I don't know if they believe in Santa or if they believe in whoever, but hopefully they get that credit and that's what I want to happen. And shout you know? out to everybody, all the parents out there that are working hard to provide for their kids and to give them a beautiful Christmas. God bless you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, um, you know, I'll reach out to the baby mom today. Yeah, we got the address. I don't know how far that is from us, but we'll figure it out. Yep. And this portion of the KC crew is brought to you by Fab Fit Fun. Now, Fab Fit Fun is a seasonal subscription box for busy women to discover brands and products for a life well lived. Now, it's more than just a beauty sample box. Now, my baby got her box and she was kind of excited, right? <laughs> I was a little excited. Now, what was in that box? Oh, my gosh. It was all types of things. You know what I like? What? The fact that there are a lot of items from well-known brands. Right. So one of my favorite things in the box was an assortment of candles. And you know how I love candles. Not I like a, to sleep well. Not only that, they had candles and they had this spray. I didn't tell you about the spray because I actually stole the spray. <laughs> the spray actually helps you sleep better. You spray it mm -hmm. before you go to sleep. And I don't know if it opens up your, your pores. Uh, not pores, but your nasal. Your nasal pores? Your nasal pores. Yeah, I call it your nasal pores. <laughs> and I was able to sleep a lot better especially uh -huh. after that video you posted of me snoring yes you need it if anybody needs it it's you so i'm gonna get, get you your own subscription of fab fit fun my goodness now try fab fit fun today go to fabfitfun.com to subscribe and start getting the box for a life well lived use promo code kc crew to get ten dollars off your first box that's over two hundred dollars in value for just 39.99 again go to fabfit.com and use our code kc crew to get ten dollars off your first fab fit fun Fun box. All right. Now, uh, I want to get to the email of the week. That was the letter of the week. <laughs> get to the email of the week. <laughs> All right. Now, um, email of the week. Hey, Gia, first of all, I love the relationship that you and your hubby have grown to have. You are truly blessed and not because it's perfect, but because each day you both wake up and make it work. That's a choice and you both make it every day. I need some advice. I'm 38 years old. I have a three year old daughter and I'm at the tail end of my divorce from her father. We had been together since I was 20 years old and I find myself single and divorced. We own a home together and my daughter and I moved out over a year ago. I've been dating one guy for the past eight months. I feel like I needed someone in my life to help me get through this enormous tough process. Yeah. He's a great guy, but a few years younger. He doesn't seem to understand my needs and hasn't totally been there when I needed him emotionally. I'm financially independent and my soon to be ex-husband pays a decent amount of child support. My issue is I've had to pay close to 20000 in legal fees and my husband has held on to the money that was in our savings account. She put in parentheses to be spiteful and that's made my life that much more difficult. I find myself needing to move to a cheaper but equally luxurious apartment and I need a little help. I don't normally ask anyone for help and never have. I don't like to either. I would rather if I would rather if you see me going through something, then you should want to mm -hmm. and not turn a blind eye. I guess my question is, is it wrong to expect some help from someone I've dated for almost nine months? Is that a sign of things to come? Please keep my info anonymous. Thank you. And I truly appreciate your advice. What do you think? I think nine months is too early. Nine months is too early for it. Yes. To expect any type of financial support or help from another person. <sighs> I think nine months <sighs> is early. Okay. So now this is what I'm thinking. Nine months is kind of early. I'm not going to sit here and say. And, and, and I'm sorry, babes. Mm -hmm. It's not as though she's down and out. She lives in a luxurious apartment, apparently. Um, 
and she wants to move to an equally as luxurious apartment, but that's less expensive, Uh which of course makes sense. Nobody would want to downgrade. Mm -hmm. Um, But if it's not something that you can pull together using, you know, your own finances, then maybe you might have to take that hit and move into something that might be a little bit less luxurious until you can build yourself back up financially so that you can live in the type of place that you would like to live in. But to move into something that is equally as luxurious, even though you can't necessarily comfortably afford it, and at the same time expect help from someone else that you've only been dating for nine months, I don't think that that's terribly reasonable. And I understand what she's saying. If you're in a pinch and you're in a relationship with somebody and it's clear that you need help, you would expect for them to jump in without you having to ask them for the help. But I think that that's something that type of reflex on your partner's part, I think, comes over time. I think that Mm -hmm. something like that, that reflex or that instinct for them to want to jump in and help you, I think, is something that is probably built over a little bit of a longer period of time, especially when it comes to helping you pay for an apartment. You know, um, I look at it two ways. Now, one thing that she said that I didn't really love was she said she just needed somebody to help her cope with her problem. But that's true, babes. But she didn't necessarily say she loved the individual or he, she said he was a coping mechanism, right? Yeah, typical, your your quintessential rebound person. Right. And I don't, I don't think that people necessarily look at a rebound relationship as a rebound relationship. I think that when you're suffering the loss of a relationship Mm -hmm. that you held dear to you and you find yourself single and alone in the world and you need companionship, you need someone to talk to, you need someone to go places with, you need someone to play Monopoly with or right. to watch TV with or to just cuddle with at night, mm-hmm. you may feel an emptiness sexually or what have you. I think that it's natural to fill that void. I don't think that people go in like, you know what, I'm just going to pluck this person out from the crowd and he's just going to be, you know, my person for the time being. I think you might see somebody, you see something something that you like in them and you explore it. Correct. And then maybe later on when you realize that there's flaws in that relationship or whatever, you might say, mm, "Maybe I was just a little needy at that time or maybe I was just a little vulnerable." Shoot, maybe that might he might have really just been a rebound. Right. You know? Um but I don't think that she went in saying that and that's even if it is her rebound person i think that she put it a different way Mm -hmm. but i think that that's fine because i think that it's natural and if it's meant to work out then it'll work out and if it's not then it won't you know um if you think about it you know if that person knows what you've been going through for the last nine months because like you said that's your rebound you've been talking you've been explaining i just put that label on it so oh, let's well, not okay, i, I was saying guy. it could be let's just say okay. well, how did she put it i'll how call it the rebound it? she was like the guy's helping her with the, the, the coping with his, his problems her problems her problems right right okay. so like i said so if I'm you know, I'm helping you cope with your problems, that means you know everything I'm going through financially and everything and how much how stressed I am. Nine months we're having sex, we're fucking, we are definitely fucking, we're intimate, correct? I mean, why'd you have to? Why is it? Why it gotta be all about that though? I'm just asking. Are, are we fucking? Can we just have sex? I'm giving. All right, we're having sex. Yeah, like you could have left it at that. Okay, we're having sex. We're intimate. I'm giving you this box. <gasps> like, are you serious? You got this box, correct? So you got this box. <laughs> We're intimate. Now what? We're intimate. We we are at one, right? (laughs) Now, if I need you to help me out so I am less stressed. Wow. Do you even understand what you're saying? Go ahead. This is a relationship. You should help us. Do you even understand what you just said? Yes, I know what I'm saying. Wow. I'm being honest. That sounds crazy to me. And it's even crazier coming from a man. This is I mean, it's the truth. No, it's not. That's awful what you just said. It is the truth. Rashawn, that's awful what you just said. Basically, what you just said was, you're having sex with me? You should pony up this money. I didn't say it like that. That's what you just said. I didn't say it like really? that. Really? You get in this but, box? But I, you need to pony up that money. But, oh, I need I need I need help with my rent? Okay. 
You need to you need I'll to change, dig in them pockets. I, 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 I'll change it That's up. what you just said. All right, so take the sex out of it, right? I'm, Hold on one second. Oh. Who's coming in the room? He's bringing your box that you wanted. The box that you just delivered is is here. What up, Logue? Hey, boo boo. Well, all right, put that box down. Thank We're taping the podcast. Right say what's up to the people. Hi. No, you gotta say what's up, people. What's up, people? All right, peace. All right. Close the door, please. Oh, Love you. Another box. Okay, oh, just leave it box? outside the door. No, he can just bring it up there. The you can bring it up there. All right. So let's take it out of the box and the sex and all that, right? I mean, that's what it was all about. No, no, you just no. We could take it out of it. I'm just, t- I'm just showing you an example. Wow. If wait, I... wait, wait, wait. What's that line? What's that Cardi B line? What? <laughs> um, um, bleep them. Then I get some money. Fuck them and I get some money. Yeah, that's not very inspirational. I'm not talking about that's that. That's what you just said. No, right, but bleep them and then I get some no, money. Right, that's what change, you just said. Let's change it. Let's take it out of the sex. If I cook for you every day and I'm satisfying your soul because I'm cooking this great food for you. Yes. If I'm if I need a little okay. extra, you should be helping me. Oh, that's so that means so everything that I do that's nice for you, if I'm a guy, that means I gotta pay for it. No, but you should do something nice for me. And if yeah, you and I'm sure, out, and I'm sure that if she's cooking for him, I'm sure he's doing something nice for her. I don't need you to open the door for me at this time. I need you to help with these bills because I'm stressed the fuck out. Oh, so that's what you're about. And, that, that's why we're in this relationship. That's what this girl is about. Yes, it's nine months. She's just. Said, I don't think I'm not getting the impression that that's what she's about. Well, I'm getting the impression that this just might be what she believes. Well, I think that she just might think that that's the way of the world. And don't get me wrong. That's the way of the world for a lot of people. Well, he's a been in lot nine months of women right he's now. He's been eating that box, put, sticking his dingling in that box. And, and, and that's fine, you know, because a woman's body is her temple, right? <laughs> <laughs> a woman, a woman's body is her temple. For sure. And if Yo, they, you, I can't even understand and if you gonna get married to you at this very moment right and now. And if you're going to give up that all temple. It's like, I'm so beyond, you, do you really, you don't really believe this, right? Yes. No, you don't. If she's no, giving you up that don't. Temple, no, you don't. And she needs a little help. Whatever it is, it could be she could be help need help moving. She needs help. He should help. So hold on. So you think it's his obligation to help, not financially. financially. Just help, regardless. No, no. It you just, said financially. It just so happens that is what's on the table right now. It you just so happens said financially that this part is financial. But if she needs help, let's say she needs help moving. Move. Help him yes. Move. Yeah. I think that he should help her move. Well, she need, he needs help if, financially. If time allows and he has a good back, I think that he should help her move. Well, if time sure. allows and he has a good wallet, he should help her out a little bit. I'm not saying give her everything, but if she needs a little something right no, now. No, Rashawn. It's not a little something right now. Rent is something that comes up every month. So if he helps her now, that means that will be his responsibility and obligation to help her for every month coming until she's able to do it for herself. And until is a variable. Yeah, I don't, Who knows when until is? I could be I paying a agree. portion of your rent mm-hmm. for the next 16 months. I didn't sign up for that. We're still in the, you know, dipping dipping our toes in the water phase at nine months. I don't know if this is going to be a right. long-term 16-month relationship at this point. I'm not something. signing up for that. Right now, I'm still trying to figure out yeah. how much I like you and we're if I love you. We're not we're not 16 anymore. Like When we were 16, nine months was still holding hands and kissing each other on the mm-hmm. lips and not even tongue kissing. Nowadays, nine months means we fucking raw. That's what that means, nine months now. Wow. That's, That's what that means wow. right now. That's what it means? We're yes, as an adult, nine months, right, you're yeah. fucking raw. Mm-hmm. I get it. I nine months with me and you, we didn't even no, tongue kiss it. at that time. again. We, we didn't did even talk so stupid with tongue kiss. Still, mm, 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 mm. That's what we were doing. Nowadays, this is a long lip to lip mm, kiss, no tongue. Mm, mm, mm. I'm gonna press harder now. I'm gonna tilt my but head. Now, nine months is all the way in. So I. Think, so hold on. You think that if you're dating someone for nine months, that means that you want to marry them? I didn't say that. That means you want to be in it for the long haul. I didn't say that necessarily in the long that haul. But that means I'm still paying for dinners and buying you nice little cute gifts and giving you massages save and taking you to the thing. movies. Save your That's dinners what nine and months And help me is. with my rent because I'm fucked up. Listen, if it's an occasion, like let's say she's messed up on rent one month. Okay. Or she can't afford her phone bill. But he's turning a blind eye. Bill. He's acting like he'd like, he be like... Did she say that? Yes. He said, she used she that term, but eye. I don't remember if she said that he's turning a blind eye. <laughs> I think she might have said something more along the lines of... Maybe she does, She would hope that if someone sees her struggling with something, that she would hope that he wouldn't turn a well, blind this, eye. This is how That's I kind of the impression I got. This is how I envision it. Damn. 
telephone bill is that much? And this is him. Word. Turn over. Let me get some of that pussy. That's what I'm. That's Word. that. That's what. That's what I envision. That, that's what you envision. Yes. Really. Mm-hmm. That's where your imagination. <laughs> that, that's you. what I envision when I heard the story. I don't know about you, but that's what I heard. Yeah. No. That's not. No. No. Actually, you know, that's you not didn't, what I. No. Nope. Mm-hmm. My mind didn't go there. Oh, my mind okay. didn't go there. Uh, my mind pretty much just told me that nine months is early to have that expectation of financial support. And like I was about to say, if it's a bill and it's for instance, say the month of Christmas and you're tight because you have all these financial obligations to buy gifts and things of that nature. And you're a little short and you make mention that you're a little short and that person doesn't step up to the plate and they have it and they can, then you could be like, "Hmm." you know, you can expect maybe like a one-time thing, but she said that she wants to move into an equally as luxurious apartment. Mm Mm-hmm. That's a little bit less. I mean, she got a kid. That kid's got to remain Whatever the same. it is. Okay, yeah, that's wonderful. Okay. But that might be living above her means. If her means don't dictate that she can afford that at that time on her own, mm-hmm. then that's not a decision sh- that she should make because no one is committed to her. No one is committed to helping her do that. A boyfriend isn't committed to... Tell me you pay your rent because a boyfriend can up and leave at any time. So let's say, okay, let's, let's say, okay, he's getting that box. Uh-huh. He makes that commitment. They're good for four months. And then he's like, you know what? I'm not really feeling this relationship anymore. And then he moves on to something else. She's caught in a situation where she has to pay rent that she can't afford because she was being funded by someone that wasn't committed well, to that's her. On her. Now she's bleeped up. That's on her. She, now needs, what? she needs to know how to st- she needs to know how to No, take the that point money. is don't buy him, anything that you can't afford on your own. And for him it's an investment. If someone that's Some, helping you isn't committed to sometimes you. Sometimes investments are good, sometimes investments are bad. Same thing with that's her. Your advice? Sometimes investments are good, sometimes investments so are just, bad. So just just gamble. No, gamble. Not. It's it's a crapshoot. Like the dwelling for you and your daughter just hey, just roll with it. Hey, just roll the dice, see what happens. Yeah. That's your advice? Well, well, I don't know. Hey, what? I just say, Mama, he should be helping out, at least talking to you about. It. He should be turning a blind eye. And if he's turning a blind eye and not even trying to talk yeah, to you he about, he should it, be talking to her. Then I don't know. Maybe help her figure out an alternative. That's true. You know, maybe support her in that way. Correct. Maybe help her look for other luxurious apartments that she can afford on her own. Correct. You just never want to rely on and, and as a woman out there, you know, trying to do it for yourself, you don't want to rely on somebody. That's true. If you're not in a position where you know you want to be with this person for the rest of your life and if they don't know that they want to be in it for the rest of their lives with you, then you need to make sure that you individually can handle all of your bills and obligations, especially if you have a child. You can't depend on someone that hasn't proposed to you. You're not planning a wedding. You're not married. You're not in it for years like no 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 all right well i i, I don't know i mean gid looks one way i look at the other way you really hold on look, look me square in the eye you really believe what you said yes he should, i think you're playing devil's he, advocate you cannot possibly believe he that he should help out a little bit that's how i really feel help out a little bit mm-hmm. how about a little bit yes but then okay so address what i said then so what happens but like no jokey jokey like what happens if she gets into this apartment that she can't afford because he was like, you know, yeah, I'm going to help out. And then their relationship doesn't pan out. Well, maybe she's just behind because of the lawyer fees and everything that she has to pay. And she's actually doing well. And once she's caught up, she's OK. I mean, we don't know what the situation is, but, you know, she's saying she just needs a little bit. And maybe that little bit will help her get over to, to the promised land. I don't know. But do you disagree that if she if she's not in a position to pay for that apartment right now that she can't yeah, afford it. Of course it. not. I don't think yeah, she, that she, yeah, you she, live she, above your means. I don't believe that you should even live close to your means. Correct. Yeah. Right. She you should. Know, yeah. That's not financially. She shouldn't jump out the window if she doesn't have that it. That sounds and not, like she's jumping and not out the rely, window. But we don't know. We we don't know the situation. We don't have the full story. Maybe I like I said. The story actually. Usually I feel like we don't have enough information. But in that situation, I feel like there's a there's a chunk of information. I mean, we there. don't know. Maybe she's you know backed up because of lawyer fees, and once those lawyer fees are taken care of, she's good. I mean, we don't know. Maybe credit card bills are high because she had to do so many different things and move out, and she wasn't prepared because she didn't think of her her marriage was going to end and now she's just trying to play catch right but then 
the answer is when she's caught up she might be good we don't know right but then the answer is you know you move into an affordable apartment until those tides change and then you move into something that meets the standard that you'd like to live at i don't know well that's wish, what i think i wish him the best of luck yes i wish him the best of luck all right and um Can you stop rubbing yourself i don't know why i mean I, that, I cannot I'm stand naked. the noise that that makes when you rub your skin it's just like shh all right i'll stop Thank you. I, you know, I want to, um, for next week's podcast, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. And I want you to think about so we can have this conversation. It could be You're in actually mind. telling me something beforehand yeah, yeah, yeah. when it of course, comes to this podcast? Of course, it's New Year's resolutions. We, You know, we do that every year. Everybody has New Year's resolutions. Uh, I want to talk about last year's resolutions and then this year's resolutions. And if you actually, you know, did what you wanted to do with your New Year's resolutions. Okay. And I also want to talk about um, sex. You want to talk about sex? Yes. Okay. Um, Go figure. You want to talk about sex? Yes, because a woman's sex drive is way worse than a, a man's sex drive a lot worse of times. Worse in what way? What do you mean? Like, for instance, if it was up to you, we'd have sex seven times a day. Seven times a day, Rashawn? Okay, maybe six. But, th- <laughs> like, your sex drive is, like, on... <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? A thousand extra... They can't see what you're doing. Oh, right now. my hand is moving. Like your sex drive is like through the roof. Like you're like a guy that took 50 Viagra pills. Like it's ready to rock and roll at any given moment. You can, I can touch you and you're like, Psh, let's go. Like that's how you they are. They can't see you. Like, the other, like, we, like yesterday, they can't, they can't see like yesterday I was, ju- I was just joking with you to see what you would say. I said, babe, let's go in the back of the store right now in the bathroom. You're like, I'm game. Let's go. <laughs> I was just joking. It was a lot of people there, but you're like, fuck it, let's go. I'm like, you fucking freak. Like, turn down the horny. I was horny. just playing. You turn down the horny shit. So I want to talk about sex drive. You actually turned me on because I thought that you were serious. I know. And then you was like. I thought that you were serious. Like, let's go. I was like. I'm like, I'm dad. I was like, this is fucking bathroom in Patterson. Like, you want to go? You're like, let's go. I'm like, you fucking freak. Goodness gracious. Uh huh. But I want to talk about sex drives and, and, you know, men versus women sex drives and, and, and how can sex drives match in a relationship. I want to talk about that as well. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. I like it. Right. I like it. All right. Um, and that's about it. Okay. We got to go back out and get to Christmas, more Christmas shopping. Yes. We're about to hit these stores up. Yeah. We got to go get boxes because we don't have any boxes to wrap a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. We have to make another run to the sneaker store. Hold on a minute. There's something I want to talk about before we wrap. Is it fast? Uh, I guess it can be. Okay. What's yeah. That? I want to talk about the insane prices of resellers in this day and age. And a situation that Rashawn and I found ourselves in that made us say, what the bleep? Like, for real. Oh, you want to talk about that now? Because I'm still trying to get that hookup. So I don't know if that's going to mess up our hookup, but we could talk about it now. <laughs> the people that's trying to hook you up don't listen to this podcast. I mean, but Logan, does Logan? Logan, Logan uh, Logan's friends listen to this podcast? Because we're going to be talking about him and some of his stuff. <laughs> Let's talk about it next week. Because no, some talking. of the stuff was lo- we're trying to get for Logan. And if he hears it, he's going to know. He's not going to. Nope. Th- no. No, no. You sure? Yeah, I'm positive. All right. So you think his 13 year old friends are listening to our podcast? Madison's friend listens to the podcast. You never know. They're not going to go back and say nothing to him. We're good. Go. Okay. So Logan is into Supreme. Supreme, if you don't know what Supreme is, it's a clothing company. It's more of a skateboard clothing company that does a lot of dope stuff. Their uh, whole thing is, you know, pretty much they're very into red, like. They have dope T-shirts. They have dope skateboard stuff. They have dope accessories. And they do a drop every Thursday. Explain what a drop is. All right. So what they do is they release a certain amount of items on Thursday, and it's very limited. So they might release, let's say, uh, 200 T-shirts, 100 headbands, uh, 100 sweatshirts, uh, 50 barber clippers, uh, five footballs, 10 basketballs, whatever it may be. Let's say that. And they drop on Thursday. And every Thursday, there's a lot of people waiting outside for that stuff. And a what, line is an understatement. And what people do is when they, when they get the stuff, they resell it at a crazy price. No, so, no, 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 no. Crazy doesn't suffice. Let me explain. Let me Insane. Explain. Let me explain. So Logan is into, into Supreme heavily. So Guy and I said, we're going to go get Logan some Supreme. So we go to the store that is a resale store. All they do is resell Supreme. Now, 
we go to get a t-shirt. Now, t-shirts are usually anywhere between $75 and $100. Now, when Gia says that these prices are, what, what word did you use? Insane. Now, tell them why it was insane. Well, first of all, these, what you said, let's say they're $100 t-shirts. Correct. They're probably actually only worth about $20. Mm-hmm. They might be $20 t-shirts that probably cost the manufacturer 3 or $4 to make. Right. Honestly, if I had to guess. Mm-hmm. They sell it at their store retail price, I'm guessing maybe $100. Correct. These shirts are so in demand that we get there. We're looking around and we're like, okay, this might be nice. This might be nice. They have this thing called the box logo t-shirt. And I guess that's their big thing, their hottest seller. So they were able to pull a box logo t-shirt for Logan in a size small. It was the last one. We bring it to the counter. Now, to save, just to make sure that in case anybody he knows listens, we had three other items. I'm not going to say what those items are, but we had three other items that we brought to the register. Mm Mm-hmm. And Rashawn is just like, all right, yeah, we'll take the T-shirt. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. How much is that T-shirt? Guy looked at me square in the face and said, 985. I said, 985 what? (laughs) He looked back at me square in the face and was like, 985 monkeys, dummy. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, he didn't say that, but his look said that to me absolutely his look said 985 monkeys dummy i was like nah in that case you could put that back el cheapo over there was like you could put that back we're not getting that t-shirt we're not getting i that said t-shirt. he is not getting a box logo t-shirt this christmas no not for 985 dollars for a 20 dollar t-shirt it didn't i couldn't even kind of make sense of it Like nothing about that felt good. Mm. Nothing about that felt right. So that was like a solid no. So if anybody has a Supreme hookup, let us know because poor Logan is going to be disappointed when it comes to... He's going to be Supreme-less. He's going to be Supreme-less. But no, we did get him a few other items that he wanted. But that t-shirt, like you guys have to understand, is a white cotton short sleeve t-shirt. There's nothing on it. There's a red box on the chest that says Supreme. Correct. And that's it. That's it. That is it. That's it. So I was shocked, appalled, and mortified. And then I rushed out of the store and talked about it for like the next hour. So yeah, yeah, that was kind of on my mind. But no, but reselling is a big deal. And people do it with sneakers. You know, like very hard to get sneakers. You buy a pair of sneakers for one price and then you're able to sell it for triple the price. And it's like it's a very, very, very big business right now. And it's not just that. It's all types of things. Handbags, you know, limited edition pieces of shoes, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. People are really making a whole living on reselling hard to get merchandise. And it takes the fun out of a lot of it because <laughs> kids really buy it because they want to wear it. You know, same thing with sneakers. They buy them because they want to wear them. And these resellers are really making it where, I mean, it's a business. Some of these people are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year doing it, but it, it really affects the business badly where no, these kids are waiting online. Yeah. They're robbing kids. Kids are getting hurt and beat up for these things. And it, it's, it's very crazy, but you know, we really experienced it with Supreme. I disagree with you on one of those points i think that the more limited these pieces are the harder it is to get the higher that the resellers sell it for the more people want it the more desirable it is because it's the whole supply and demand theory yeah but these kids can't afford it you know these these are not adults these are kids that are paying overpricing for these shirts like you know you're talking about a hundred dollar shirt which first of all like you said it probably costs five dollars to make so the store is already making its money but Mm -hmm. now these resellers are charging nine hundred dollars so for a kid that can't afford it which what's happening is when that when i see this kid wearing it i'm gonna rob this kid and take him from it that's why a lot of these kids are getting hurt shot robbed and stabbed over sneakers shirts clothes sneak you know jackets and all this other stuff right no that's true but The point that I'm making Mm -hmm. is that it being so limited and hard to get, difficult to acquire, that is what I think makes it so desirable and so hot. I mean, Yeezys are dope, right? Yeah. But 
the fact that they're so difficult to get and you have to damn near sleep on a line outside of a store to be to be there when they open up in the morning to get one and you still may not get one. I think that makes it that much more desirable because right. it makes people want it more because they have to work harder for it. And then if you're able to get it and then you wear it, you're wearing it like a damn accomplishment, not just like a fashion piece. Correct. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Then when people see you with this, like, oh, that person has the Yeezys. You know what I mean? Because it's it's not easy to come by. Right. It's like like a, like an accomplishment. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. So I, I really do believe in that whole supply and demand theory and i think that it really does have an effect on people and obviously that's what drives up prices they they produce a limited amount of things so the supply is low right. the demand is up you can charge what you want because there's always going to pe- be people out there that are going to pay it correct you know what i mean and it is sad for the kids or it's hard for the kids that really really want it but let's be honest mm-hmm. that supreme t-shirt isn't the dopest thing i've ever seen in my life like i said It's a white T-shirt that says Supreme in a red box and a rectangle. People aren't in love with it because it looks so amazing. They want it because it's hard to come by. Right. I agree. And, you know, but also it's it's desirable to those kids. Just like I'm sure. Because of that reason. And and I'm sure that when when we were kids, there were things that we wanted our parents looked up like, I don't understand it. Like cross colors. Or, Or Jordans. You don't think your parents understood Jordans? Hell no. They're $100 for some sneakers. They're like, hell no. Yeah, but Jordans still looked great. To us. They might not have been able to rationalize the prices for them, but they still looked great. Yeah, true. You know, but cross colors that, you know, <laughs> you know, that maybe, maybe not, yeah. <laughs> you know, that was pretty ugly, but we were, and we liked it. What? I was what? cross colors, Asics, no, all boy. of that. Yes. All right. All right. Now we can wrap up. All right. I just had to get that off of my chest. Okay. All right. Well, we will see you guys next week. Um, and thank you guys for joining us and hanging with us and rocking out with us. And we'll see you next week. I am DJ NV. I am Gia Casey. Have a merry, merry Christmas. Mm-hmm. Happy holidays. Mm-hmm. Well, why do you have that look hey, on your face? Come on, no. Go ahead. Well, I like doing a podcast here naked. It's easy access. I can see a nipple and I can just slide right in after. We're going shopping. Nah, oh, I, oh, oh, but you weren't game in the store yesterday. We're not in the store. We're you see, home. you're all talk, no action. Anyway, I'm Gia Casey. I'm DJ 